Hey guys, this is The Mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today. I wanted to talk about a TikTok video that I saw a few days ago where um, a hospice nurse was warning women, older women, um, women who were middle-aged, never been married, no kids, great career, uh, secure financially, have their own homes, life insurance policy, health insurance, everything. She was warning these women who are middle-aged and even some younger women to not be hospice care wives. So she was saying that a hospice care wife is a wife who marries a man who is in failing health. And what these men do is after 30, 40 years of running the streets, running through a woman, right? Uh, not finding a woman who they deemed as deserving of their provision or protection. What they would do is, you know, after they find out they're sick or they're old or their penis isn't working anymore, they love bomb an older woman or young women into rushing to get married, right? Because now they need life insurance and they need health insurance to take care of them. So, and they need a place to stay. So what a lot of these men are doing, she said, is that these older men who were players their entire lives, what they would do is deliberately um, target older, single, desperate even, lonely women, black women especially, who had to work their way through life. These are women, she said, that were not considered preferences or desirable for marriage in their youth for whatever reason. And now that these women have glowed up and they're financially self-sufficient, these men will do and say anything possible to trick these unsuspecting women into marriage. And again, since many women believe in the fairy tale of happily ever after and the Prince Charming and all this other nonsense that they've been conditioned to believe, they will allow these men to take advantage of them. And they will believe that these old ailing men who don't go to the doctor, who have spent their entire lives running from responsibility, um, who have baby mama drama and back child support payments that I do. She said that uh, a lot of us want to believe that these men who are at this point broke they may be sick. Uh, they may not have good relationships with their children, right? Uh, they may owe child support. These men will try to convince you women who are successful and beautiful still and, you know, healthy with great insurance policies. They'll convince the women that now they want to get married, that they are, uh, they're looking for their princess, their queen to live the rest of their life with. But she said that a lot of these men are actually sick and they're in failing health. So they desperately need someone to take care of them. And so they will marry the first woman that they can find with a place to stay, right? Because men are hypergamous too, uh, with her own home, with her own money, with her own career. And she said she's seen situations where these broke down men would run up healthcare bills. And, you know, the wife would have to pay out of her pocket to take care of this sick man who knew he was sick before he got married. And then once the man dies, his children, who he wasn't taking care of, his children will try to come after the wife, right? They'll come after you, the middle-aged woman, even after you were taking care of their ailing father and who never really did anything for you, who never brought anything to the table but his sick body and his desperation and his broken penis and his old age. He didn't bring nothing to the table with that. Um, his children will come after you for some sort of inheritance. She said she's even seen cases where the young children or the children of the old man will accuse the wife of causing the father to die an untimely death. This is what happens, right? And she was like, do not get married to these old men. If you weren't good enough to be a wife in your 20s and 30s when you were trying to build with somebody, you're not good enough to be a wife now when you have everything you need without the man. Okay, because your 20s and 30s, she said, is about building a legacy with someone. If he wasn't building with you, he wasn't shooting with you in the gym in your 20s and 30s, don't get married to these men now, especially the men who have never been married. And all of a sudden, when they meet you six months later, they're ready to get married. She said, don't do that. So I'm mentioning this because one of the uh, the members of the Manosphere, one of the key content creators of the Manosphere, his name was Alan Curie, I believe he recently passed away at the age of 59. And I remember watching one of his videos like six or seven years ago, and he was pretty much bragging about a life of bachelorism, right? Being a bachelor his whole life, never getting married, never wanting to get married. He didn't have to get married. It wasn't a big deal for him. And I remember being disgusted like, damn, you know, he's basically glorifying being a player and he was old as hell. So today I found out he passed away and apparently he got married two years ago 
to a woman 30 years younger than him. So this young woman who he married two years ago is now a young widow and the single mother of his child who's about two, three years old, I think. So he rushed to get married when he was in ailing health to a young woman who now has to pick up the pieces of her life with no father around to help at 28 years old. Okay, so this man probably knew he was sick. Now I'm not trying to, you know, insult this man, rest in peace to him. I'm not trying to cast aspersions on him. I'm not trying to, this is not a hit piece on the man, right? I don't know much about him, but I do remember him being famous for telling men not to get married until they get old, right? Or played out, okay? Don't get married until you're broken down. Now I'm not saying this verbatim, but that was kind of the premise of what he was saying. He was kind of, um, I think he was Kevin Samuels before Kevin Samuels. And he had an issue with Kevin Samuels for not uh, crediting him with a lot of the things that he learned about relationships. This guy, Alan, was an author uh, before he became a content creator on YouTube. And he talked about how men should approach women. You know, be direct, be honest, and tell women you just want them for whatever. He also bragged about, you know, having sex with married women from 17 to 37 years old. So he spent 20 years of his life, at minimum, being a player, using women for sex, right? And so, now at the age of 57 56 he decides that he needs to get married and settle down because he may have found out at that point that his health was failing and he needed someone to take care of him in his final days the same way he refused to do when he was younger when he was younger he probably thought that women does not deserve protection and provision as a wife from him no he's out here slanging penis but when he hits the wall right at 55 56 years old when he hits the wall, he wants a young, beautiful, fertile woman to look after him, even at the expense of her youth and her freedom and her beauty, which is something that he enjoyed when he was younger, from 17 to 37 when he was running around. He got to enjoy that, but now he has this young single mother who's a widow at 28 years old with a young child and a man who probably only married her because he needed a place to stay or he probably only married her because he found out he was sick and he wanted someone to care for him in his final days because his penis probably wasn't working as well as it was before and he was not going to be as appealing to younger women to women in general if he was sick and old that's basically what it was so i'm going to play the video clip of the uh the um, hospice nurse talking about this and then i'll come back with my commentary sisters We've got to stop being hospice care wives. We have to. Today, yet another friend I've learned who got married later in life, and I'm talking 45 and above, because it seems that when myself and my friends who have been single women, who, yeah, wanted to get married when we were 23 to a nice man who uh, built something with us, it didn't happen. And so we turn 45 and then suddenly here come all these brothers, you know, 40, 45, 50, just Rico Suaves. I mean, complete love bomb. They grabbed my friends, they ran them down the aisle. And today I find out yet another one of their husbands has dropped dead. I mean, I just put it that way. He was already sick when he got with her. And what I'm finding is, is that with a lot of my friends, because we've been professional women are getting married to these men and they are simply looking for benefits. They're looking to rest and to nest. It's not in sickness and in health, it's in sickness and in death. So they realize that they can't pee anymore or their kidneys are failing or they feel like they are about to have a stroke or have already had one. And then suddenly they meet my beautiful friends who've worked hard to do everything in life, to take care of themselves, uh, to not be one of the four or five black women who are murdered every day by mostly black men. And they come up, meet my friends and they run and get married. And the next thing I know, my friends are dealing with millions of dollars worth of medical bills. Not only dealing with the medical bills, but after these men have passed, here come all their grown ugly kids busting up into my friend's house, breaking their noses, carrying things out of their house, and knowing that their dad was living in a one, living in an efficiency. One of them was living with his mother, goes to live with my friend who has a house of her own, and then he passes away, and then here come all of his grown children and grandchildren kicking in her door to take things because they're certain that she's killed him, even though he's been on kidney dialysis for almost as long as, well, I guess a week after they got married. We've got to stop this because here's the, the thing that we need to, to get in our heads, sisters. 
if he did not change y'all's baby's diapers when y'all were 23, 24, 27, you don't need to be changing his depends. If he did not push your babies that you had together after y'all got married in that house that y'all got together in a stroller, don't push him around in a wheelchair. Like the last funeral I went to was of a sister, a nurse who married a man who had kids, she had kids. Sister doing just totally fine by herself. Nice, nice condo. Marries him, moves him in. A few years later, he dies. A torso. Diabetes. Had every limb on his body taken off except for his head. She, He was a torso by the time they put him in the casket. She's left with his medical bills. And dealing with his grown kids who feel that even though that condo was already hers before she married him, that they're supposed to be getting something. Stop marrying them. Stop marrying them. If you're not 22 or 23 and y'all are working to build something together, don't do it. Because this is when, when, when black men get 45 in their 50s, they start to realize that they're, they have an expiration date. And that's when they decide that they're going to find the best black woman that they can find, marry you. They make sure you got benefits and you got a place to stay. And then they want to come and sit in their femininity, but didn't do anything for you. They gave their youth and all of their health and their years of fertility and the years that they could have built wealth to some thought or just tramped around or bought cars while we were paying extra to stay in safe apartment complexes. We built our, built our careers and built our financial wealth. And then now all of a sudden they want to come in and move into your house and have you to take care of them while they lay up on you. I mean, I could go down the list. I have one friend uh, married a guy. She was totally doing well by herself, married him. Two weeks later, he's sick, quits working on her medical insurance. She's got a million dollars worth of medical bills. Uh, another friend married a guy. Oh, he was love bombing her. I was in their freaking wedding. And guess what? Year after going back for their, uh, their one year anniversary, I was going to go back there for it. He laid in the bed and died. Heart attack. Right? Um, another friend married a guy. Soon as she married him, he realized that he was sick. Hmm. He didn't know that beforehand. Gets with her, gets on her medical insurance, lives off of her, and then as soon as he got well from his illness, he left her, and now she's paying him alimony and has to give him a portion of her retirement. Sisters, we got to stop being taken advantage of. We got to stop being hospice care wives. If you want to get with them, go ahead and get with them. If you want to move them in your house, move them in your house. But here's what you don't do. Do not marry him because then he becomes your financial responsibility. And I'm telling you, these black kings, they love to rest in their femininity. They love to come up in your nice house with your fireplace and lay there and have you to nurse them to death. Mm -mm. If you just want to have him and you just want a, a king, you just want one. Here's what you do. Because he's going to move into your house. And then you're going to put your uh, money together. Then he's going to take your money to buy you an engagement ring with your money. Uh-uh. Tell him don't do that. Take that money and go get his get him a complete physical get a full physical i'm talking teeth and everything because most of these brothers have not been to the doctor since they were playing football and had a physical right in high school in high school and say so missing teeth and all this so look at how much you're going to have to pay to sustain him for the next five years because most of them are dying like at 50 before 55 so if you marry him later in life see how much it's going to cost you to take care of him um, and try to look in to see what those medical bills are going to be. Okay. Look at his health insurance if he has any and make sure that he stays on his health insurance and doesn't get on yours because yours most likely is going to be better than his because you will have, you know, built up something and been at your job for a while. Don't put him on your medical benefits. Okay. Once you find out what his health uh, is, then the next thing you do is go get a life insurance policy, no less than $100,000. Get a life insurance policy, go to an attorney, have a will written up and have him to agree that whatever he walked in with is 
is what he's going to be walking out with. And if he should die before you, which he probably will, then his grown ass ugly kids and grandkids and great grandkids can come and get his things in a trash bag sitting out on the yard and they can come and get all of that. Okay. The insurance policy will be in your name. You will be the beneficiary. Now, if he, you, if you all decide that if something happens to him, you want to give his kids, you know, some of that, then y'all decide that and put it in writing and also have it on video because I can guarantee you this. Their daddy could have had prostate cancer and been on kidney dialysis for 27 years. But as soon as he gets with you and moves into your nice house and you clean him all up, and something happens to him, they're going to come running at you and accusing you of taking his life. Sisters, stop being hospice care wives. If you want to be with them, you don't have to marry them. Do not take any financial responsibility for these men that did not take any financial responsibility for you when you were younger and in your 20s. And some of these young girls, y'all trying to get with these these old men because you want to be able to get their social security after they pass away. Okay, let me warn you against that because some of them owe so much money that you ain't going to be able to get nothing once you finish paying for their medical bills and paying for all of the, the expenses that they have because they are sick. And again, you know, I mean, your granddaddy is fine. You know, it, you know, you love your granddaddy. When I say fine, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's great. Like, I loved hugging my grandfather and being there with my grandfather. But it is something that is just kind of gross about an old man that has not taken care of himself. Because many times if they haven't had a woman to take care of and make them go to the doctor, they missing teeth, they smell like penicillin, shit, and curry, right? Coming out of their noses, hair all up places, missing the side teeth and all that, you know, stop taking them in. You know, don't let anybody use you. You've done the work. You've worked hard. You've been that worker bee and you've been a, a busy ant working. Don't let him come in and take advantage of you. Don't be a hospice care wife. So as you guys heard, right, this is what these men are doing. I didn't even consider it. I kind of did because when Maurice married Kimmy from Love and Marriage Huntsville, I mentioned that it is not a coincidence to me that he chose to marry her right after Jalen uh, or right before Jalen graduated college, right? He would did not want to be on the financial hook in a sense uh, for taking care of her child. That's what it seemed like to me. That's what I suspected. I'm not saying that Maurice is a bad guy. I'm not saying that he means to do Kimmy harm. I uh, commend him for stepping up to the plate when it comes to Kimmy battling cancer. Kudos to him for that. But I did notice that he married Kimmy after seven years, once it was number one, time for him to get custody of his child, Munster. And number two, her child, Jalen, was basically on his own. He pretty much graduated college and he was ready to move out at a certain point. So Maurice would not be obligated or responsible for taking care of Jalen the same way Kimmy would be of his child Munster with his ex-wife. I noticed that, but I didn't know it was this bad or this insidious. Like these men are really plotting on women who have never been married, right? Because of them, they're in the same age range as these older men, right? These women in their forties and fifties trying to link up with men who were 10 years older than them, 20 years older than them, who may have used them for sex 20 years ago and played around with their feelings. And then the woman was left to build up her life by herself. She was left to be the provider and the protector for herself. And now that she has amassed some sort of uh, financial security for herself, a career, right? She's still healthy. She's still attractive. No kids, no stress. These men want to come back with their wilted bodies and their broken penises looking for someone to take care of them in their old age with their baggage with their stds with their uh their bastard children they have running around right they're looking for someone to take care of them this is what, is what usually happens i have a problem with this because these men spend decades devaluing and degrading women saying that women are useless they're disposable they're a dime a dozen there's always someone or something better out there which is why they can't commit they need to sow their wild oats and then when they're finally broken down and diseased now it's time to take life seriously now oh i see the value in you now you're not a preference for me when i was younger but guess what you can take care of me now i know what a good woman is now right but some of these men aren't sick they're just down on their luck and broken down. So they'll need their, their successful single wife to pay for, you know, back taxes or to give him a place to stay to help him level up and glow up so that he can then turn around and use her resources 
to take care of the woman he really wants to be with. That also happens too. Now, I am not against love. Real, genuine, honest, sincere, true love. I am a proponent for that 100,000%. I am not a proponent of deception. I'm not a proponent of manipulation and usury. I don't fuck with that at all. Now, some men may come on here and say, you're bitter, you're this, that, and the third. No, me trying to put women on game the same way Alan and Kevin Samuels put women on, put men on game does not make me bitter. These men will try to accuse me of being bitter and angry for putting women on game about how these men operate, but they'll put Kevin Samuels on a pedestal. They'll put Alan Curry on a pedestal and say, they're just trying to tell us about your ways. Stop hating, right? Stop being jealous, okay? So, just like men need to be warned about women who have unrealistic expectations, who are damaged, who are selfish and whatever the case may be, women need to be warned about men who are predators, who will use them not only for their use, but their energy, their time, their resources, their life insurance, their health insurance, their home, okay? Men are just as hypergamous, if not even more, as women. You see Cher dating, um, what's his name? Amber Rose's ex-boyfriend, I don't know his name, right? An 80-year-old woman can buy a 35-year-old black male, or male, period, okay? Men like money just as much as women do because they need money to floss and stunt and impress other women or men if they're gay, okay? So that's what it is, so yeah. I'm a huge proponent of coming to the table on equal footing. Both partners are contributing to the relationship equally. It is not one woman or one man doing most of the work, okay? But in a lot of these situations, when these older men are rushing to get married, it's usually because the clock is really ticking for them and they've hit the wall hard. Kevin Samuels died in his mid fifties and this man, Alan, died in before he turned 60 years old. These men are, their bodies are ravaged from running the streets for decades. Drinking, smoking, partying, uh, using up their sexual energy within different bodies, not sleeping well, not having a routine or system or any sort of responsibilities to anybody else so they don't really take care of their bodies like that. They're just running the streets. This is what happens to men in the wild. Men in the wild usually end up in jail, dead, diseased, burdened by debt, or you know, a bachelor until they get old and sick and then they're desperate for, for marriage in their 50s and 60s. There is a reason why um, ever since marriages have gone downhill in the black community, the prison rate or the crime rate or the homelessness rate has gone up because most of these men do not know how to be responsible without um, having responsibilities. <laughs> women can be responsible for themselves without actually having children. There are hundreds of thousands of black women who don't have children who live responsible lives, right? They don't have any debts like that. Um, they own their own homes. They take care of their bodies and their health, right? They get their mammograms and their pap smears and they make sure they're healthy as much as possible because they don't have anyone else to pick up after. They're not being dragged through the mud by their cheating husbands. They don't have a bunch of kids to pick up after. So these women are actually healthier and live longer <laughs> when they're single. Men don't live longer when they're single. They actually burn out faster because they're less disciplined. A woman who's about her business, more than likely, she's going to live longer because she has something to live for. She has a job. She has, you know, nephews and nieces and cousins. And she likes to live a life of peace and luxury, perhaps, and comfort by her own hand. She's not looking for someone to take care of her, right? And so because of that, and she knows that she's responsible for herself, and she doesn't expect anyone to take care of her because, again, black women are the least protected and the least provided for demographic of women in the country, um, because she knows that she has to do this by herself, she's gonna make sure she has the capacity to do so by getting her education, taking care of her health, making wise financial decisions, not having a bunch of children all, you know, hither and yon, this is what women do. Men on the other hand, because they're not raising their children by and large, they have the freedom and the luxury of planting their seed in many gardens, okay? Running away from their responsibilities, burning through their life force by having sex with just anybody moving three, four, five times a day, and then three, four, five women a week. It doesn't matter. I'm not committed to anybody. I don't have any responsibilities. I'm a free man that is not beholden to anyone or anything. But now I want you women to take care of me after my body has been broken down by running the streets because I was running away from the responsibilities of having a family and a home, right? And, and practicing discipline by limiting my options. Because what men don't understand is that women have more options than them. Women always have more options than men. So when a woman chooses to settle down with one man, she's making more of a sacrifice than he is, okay? 
by and large because she has more sexual options than he does period but when a lot of these immature childish men get married at a young age they feel like their wife or their children or the responsibilities of maintaining a home is holding them back from living their best life right we are holding them back from becoming as successful as they could be or as happy and, f and fulfilled as they could be because we're just the same old women all day we're you know we're boring now we are predictable right we're not exciting or sexy anymore we got kids and bills to take care of so now they have to find excitement elsewhere they have to run from pillar to post looking for different women to save them from their own mediocrity to save them from their lack of discipline and their lack of masculinity right and so these men use women to assert their masculinity and dominance let me trick these unsuspecting women into giving me something that um i told them was not valuable right and then i'll throw away like garbage i had to already until i turn 50 55 years old and i'm broken down i got heart disease i got diabetes i got kidney problems right now my body is flailing and broken down now i need her but you're not going to tell her that you're going to tell her you're in love with her you're going to tell her that you're doing her a favor by rescuing her from the streets right so i'm saving you i'm doing you a favor i'm marrying you i'm leveling you up so you should be grateful that you have the opportunity to take care of me in my last days even though we just got married two years i think he's been married even though we just got married we should still be in like the honeymoon stage we just got married you've spent your entire marriage taking care of a sick man that's the problem here but anyway i'm gonna leave it there listen i'm not here to insult alan or kevin samuels these men have passed away. They've lived their lives. It is what it is. But this is a cautionary tale for women who have never been married. Women who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s even, desperate to be chose and cuffed up by a broke, broken, sick, impotent man who only married you so that you can take care of him. He's not marrying you to take care of you because he doesn't expect to live long, right? So now this man's widow, Alan, is out in the world by herself, taking care of his child by herself life insurance policy or not i'm sure he had a life insurance policy and if he did that's great but if he was sick for a long time them hospital bills are going to eat up that policy okay whatever money that was left over them hospital bills if he was sick for a long time what will she be left with so yeah his channel wasn't even popping like that he has some popularity but he wasn't caking it like that so what did he leave his wife besides a two-year-old baby grief and loneliness what did he do for her really you know it is what it is man I'm going to leave it there. I look forward to reading your comments. If you want to order a personal astrology or tower reading, you can go to mindoflilith.com, fill out the order entry form, submit payment via Cash App or Square Stripe, uh, wait for your report to be delivered to you within three to five business days. And so, yeah, um, I want to hear your thoughts about this because, you know, I may be coming off as bitter or I may be coming off as somebody who is jaded or no, I'm not. But <laughs> I am in my 30s. I am aware of the games that men have played. Okay, I'm not someone who's naive or green about, you know, um, how men behave when they don't want to settle down, uh, when they're immature and they're irresponsible and they want to use women. I'm, I'm aware of this, but I'm interested in, in hearing your perspective or reading your perspective about it. Oh, one more thing. Um, you can now purchase merchandise from the channel. When you visit the channel page, you can click on the shop button and just, you know, get whatever you want. Um, I appreciate your support. Um, a few of you guys have asked me for merch for a while now, and I've been taking my time to put it up. But yeah, I'm having some more things coming down the pipe as well. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to reading your comments again. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening, and I will speak to you soon.